So thank you for uh, the opportunity to present this work today. I work in the group of uh, Cancer Systems Biology at uh, Curie Institute. And uh, my talk is related to the previous one because uh, we are also developing uh, <laughs> methods to, s to analyze uh, molecular profiles for uh, cancer patients uh, mainly. And uh, we are struggling with this uh, molecular profile and tra trying to understand uh, again how these different patients uh, uh, respond in very different ways to the same treatment or uh, how they are different uh, even if uh, they are uh, diagnosed as in with the same disease. And uh, so I will uh, try to discuss uh, uh, our um, concept of uh, analyze this data, these molecular profiles in terms of uh, gene sets because uh, now we are not only uh, analyzing, uh, measuring uh, five or uh, six uh, markers, but uh, real the, in, uh, this time we are uh, um, measuring uh, thousands of uh, genes and uh, a transcriptomic or proteomic uh, uh, experiments contains uh, the measure of uh, 5,000 or 10,000 genes. So we really need to simplify all this data to understand uh, how if they, ten they can tell us something about uh, the disease and, uh, and the patient. So. Um, this uh, concept of uh, gene set is becoming uh, more and more uh, popular in analyzing uh, data, uh, molecular profiles, because uh, uh, comparing uh, different uh, patients with the same uh, disease, uh, we are uh, understanding more and more that uh, the same uh, patient and uh, the same uh, pathway uh, can be affected in different uh, individuals in different ways, meaning that uh, the same signaling can be affected uh, in one patient, maybe at the, at the membrane level. In another patient, the same pathway can be affected uh, on another molecule more downstream uh, in the signaling. And so the same signaling is affected, but uh, these, um, uh, sa these uh, samples are more comparable at the pathway level rather than at the single gene level. This is uh, why these uh, gene set approaches are uh, becoming more, more and more used to trying to dissect this type of data. This was an example where we have uh, this uh, cohort of uh, colon, uh, colorectal cancer uh, patients and we know from previous models and from previous analysis in, uh, in, um, uh, in mouse models that the notch signaling is, is affected and uh, in, a, in a different way between invasive and non-invasive tumors. So uh, we, have, uh, we want to uh, verify in a human samples what is happening thanks to these uh, very uh, large uh, projects uh, called uh, the Cancer Genome Atlas, where you are uh, access to um, uh, public data on uh, very large cohorts of patients. This is an international effort. And um, uh, so we go to the co uh, uh, data of colorectal cancer in this uh, very large cohort of hundreds of samples and we uh, divide uh, according to clinical data our uh, cohort in two groups, metastatic and non-metastatic, simply on the uh, appearance of metastasis in these uh, two, uh, two groups. And we check for uh, uh, expression of uh, genes involved in the notch signaling for these two groups. And we observe for many genes that are uh, known to be involved in notch syndrome that there were no big uh, uh, difference at the single gene level. In a in is it a culture in the, in the cancer culture, in the gene cell from there, or it's cancer cells? They are uh, biopsies in this, uh, yeah, exactly. This is uh, the cancer sample, cancer cell. right. Okay. And uh, so again, at the single gene of notch signal, we were not able to detect uh, any difference in this, uh, in this uh, signaling. So we try to, to develop a method that can get, uh, catch uh, information at the gene set level to understand how notch signaling is active or inactive in each sample. And uh, uh, the, the idea of gene set needs that we need to define some groups of genes that uh, are considered to be um, to have a coordinated um, coordinated expression. 
So these can be, for instance, uh, targets of uh, common uh, transcription factors, for instance, some uh, downstream targets, or uh, genes that are involved in the same signaling process. So there are many different ways we can define uh, these uh, sets. And then, as, soo uh, as soon as we define these sets now, we can uh, um, quantify the activity of the whole set. And uh, again, uh, this, uh, there is also another big assumption in our method that is based on the uni uni unifactor linear model, meaning that we, but of course, uh, this can be uh, exp um, expanded and uh, developed in a more complicated way. But the, the, fir the, the first uh, uh, approximation in our uh, model is that uh, the genes uh, in the same set of genes are under the, exp uh, the influence of a one main uh, big fa uh, main factor that can be an uh, oncogenic uh, uh, event or can be a drug uh, perturbation, but we need to, to do this assumption. And uh, if we are able to do this assumption, then uh, we can uh, um, approximate and uh, rewrite the, the matrix of uh, gene expression for all the, the genes in our set as the product of two, or two vectors. So the first vector is the first metagene, so the first uh, principal component of the expression of the set of genes. And the second vector gives us the level of these metagene in different samples. So with the, which, what happens is simply that the, the big matrix of uh, many genes is now um, approximated by these two vectors, uh, the, the vectors of uh, coefficients uh, that give us the, the metagene and the, the, the weights, so the, the, le the level of this metagene in our samples. And uh, this model uh, allows us to identify what is an over-dispersed gene set. And uh, this, this is a concept already uh, presented in, uh, in some recent literature where we try to uh, define uh, which gene set, uh, in our, according uh, to our conditions, uh, e express a, a high vari uh, uh, an excess of variance uh, compared to the background. <coughs> so meaning that uh, if we test uh, many different gene sets on our uh, data, there are some that uh, show high variability compared to the, a background, uh, uh, a, a random uh, gene set. And so we consider that these uh, sets are particularly active or inactive uh, in our conditions. And uh, so, of course, we have to define this background uh, expectation. And uh, if we have, if we have this, this, we can uh, identify these uh, active or inactive uh, sets. All this is implemented in a computational way that allows us to do it uh, automatic for many pathways. And uh, maybe a uh, if, if we don't have any a priori knowledge, we can test a complete uh, based database of, uh, of pathways that are now available. So if we have uh, the expression data, the, so this uh, big matrix uh, with uh, 10,000 genes measured in many conditions, and we have uh, this definition of sets of uh, pathways or uh, how we want to define, we can run uh, this analysis and at the end have um, these uh, coefficients over di of over dispersion, meaning uh, for each gene set uh, how we expect these to be over dispersed in our data according to uh, the level of this um, metagene in our samples. So there are some features that we try to introduce because, of course, uh, statistically, we need to, do, to take in account some facts. For instance, that a very small uh, gene set uh, is um, um, uh, so the, 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 um, a, high, a likelihood to have this uh, variance uh, quite, uh, uh, it's quite probable to have this uh, variance uh, by chance. And uh, so the, this L1 variance really depends on the, on the set of, this, uh, of the size of the set. And uh, so uh, we, we should avoid to have this very small set or, it, uh, or to 
take it in uh, consideration and we do it by assess the, the null distribution uh, by keeping uh, random sets of genes with the same size and testing the variance of these random sets. If uh, the, typically for small sets, we the random uh, the random sets are the same variance as the as let's say the one we are testing. Another thing that we take into account is also that we can have different patterns of over dispersion. So we have uh, some genes that contribute. We can have some genes that contribute uh, positively or negatively to the variance of this set. But we have some cases in, in which uh, all genes are uh, contributing in the same uh, in the same direction. Like uh, in this fact, imagine. Uh, a transcription factor that uh, we don't know why, but it is only an activator, and uh, all the targets are uh, overexpressed in, uh, in, um, in this set. So uh, in our uh, case, we are able also to, to detect this type of, uh, pat <coughs> of this type of uh, pattern. And also, if we have already a biological a priori knowledge, and we know that some genes uh, is, uh, are active or, or inactive, we can introduce this uh, fixing some weights in the measurements, uh, let's say, to keep in into account our a priori knowledge on, uh, on, the, on some uh, pathways. And the last one thing is also that sometimes uh, the first principal component is affected by outliers, so very special gene in the set that behaves uh, very particularly. And so typically, we also, we would like to avoid because uh, in some cases, it's a very important marker in the pathway. So it can be interesting thing. But in many cases, it's a noise uh, in the measurements. So we should avoid uh, to, to have results uh, rely too much on this type of, um, on this type of results. And uh, so we do some uh, applications. I will show you uh, at least two. I hope you have time. So the first one is uh, this uh, uh, notch signaling in the, in the colorectal cancer. As we know, this uh, single expression uh, is not particularly informative. But uh, now, if we measure uh, the notch, and uh, we include also some other pathways that were informative for us, uh, WINT and P53, in, the, in our analysis, these are the results of our uh, gene set quantification. So here is, uh, for each point, we have is uh, a sample, and uh, is uh, the, the level here is the, the not is the score of our aroma tool for the notch signaling in this uh, sample. So we can see that uh, for um, uh, aggressive tumors, the red ones, we have at least uh, one pa one group of tumors where this is. Uh, not seem to re really active, while in the non-aggressive tumors, the, the situation is uh, more, let's say, uh, dis uh, more mm, distributed. And uh, for P53s, we was really clear. So we are, uh, we are, uh, we have lost uh, P53 C, uh, ta targets or s in uh, in this uh, patient compared to the other group. And WIND also was a significant result because it seemed to be quite active in the invasive tumors rather than in the non-invasive ones. And so this was to, to an example to measure uh, this data in terms of uh, gene sets. Uh, one other application, we are doing more and more uh, type uh, an application of this uh, data in the, is um, in uh, analyzing transcriptomic data in a, uh, checking the consistencies between the transcriptomic data in a mathematical model of uh, metastasis that was uh, developed in our group. In this diagram, uh, this is a typical uh, diagram uh, showing a, a Boolean model of uh, invasiveness. Uh, so what does it mean that we have some nodes that are uh, connected by uh, edges that can be active or inactive? And uh, we try to model uh, the process in terms of logical rules that can, uh, according to some uh, initial conditions, evolve towards uh, different phenotypes. Okay. And what this not be biological it corresponds to what? Uh, this is the uh, biological is the no, uh, what is what is known about uh, some process uh, in some mo uh, mm, signaling that is involved in invasiveness, and now these uh, uh, components are connected uh, towards. Some, some examples specifically what in not, what information goes into in order. Okay, another another here is a molecular clinical information. What kind of information? Um, 
it's, it's not <coughs> clinical information, this is uh, biological information, meaning that we know in uh, literature and in uh, biological uh, information that, uh, for instance, AKT, AKT1 or AKT2 are involved in the process of invasiveness. Now we put all the components together and we try to connect them according to inhibitory or uh, activity um, uh, influence. And then we give, we give uh, logical rules to evolve uh, from uh, initial conditions until uh, towards uh, phenotypes, so to, towards uh, observables. This is the process of uh, logical modeling. Uh, but again, this was done by uh, many of my colleagues, so, uh, but uh, again, I, I can try to explain uh, how, how it works. But what we have done is uh, now, okay, we have these components, but we would like also to, to see if these uh, molecular profiles that are uh, measured in, um, in our data fit with these uh, components. If uh, what we accept to be active is really uh, express in our data if uh, what is expected to be inactive uh, is uh, down. And uh, if we do again by um, gene by gene, we don't see this uh, big difference. So again, we try to uh, connect to each node in this model a set of genes instead of one single one. This is meaning that for TGF beta, for instance, we try to measure the level of uh, to by uh, Roma the TGF beta targets and uh, the same for uh, the other components of the of the of the network and this seems to be uh, to give a more consistent result meaning that uh, again uh, some uh, things that are uh, expected to be inactive in uh, the non-metastatic uh, group becomes active in the metastatic one etc and this again was not possible to observe at the individual gene level and uh, I have five more minutes to present the final. Uh, well, okay, let's uh, skip the third uh, uh, ex um, example. But uh, again, all these uh, tools are uh, available if uh, can be uh, uh, of uh, interest for other type of applications. And this is the working group uh, in, uh, that are collaborating to this uh, project. Uh, many of them and the uh, Cancer Assistance Biology Group and uh, Rick Bonet now is in um, Cancer uh, uh, Paul. And uh, that's it. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was, I'm not sure why you do this, because it's relevant uh, with respect to the approach and the interpretation of the data. Uh, in, in practice, now you find, for instance, the wind gene set is changed in a significant way. And what does that mean? It means the wind is important to cancer, but it might be that it's part the wind set, gene set is part of a larger gene set and essentially driven by the other components of the larger gene set. And so it might be that it's only a passenger of a larger change. That's what really counts with cancer. Mm -hmm. So in the, you, yeah, what I mean is you can't draw conclusions about the relevance of the changes in this gene set simply from this data without the context. Yeah, the, the assumption, as I said, is this uh, unifactor model, and uh, as soon as you ana apply these methods to a cancer uh, data set, you assume that the main uh, driver, driver event is an oncogenic event, so this is what really gives the data uh, the variance. So, it's of course, if you analyze, uh, if you think that main, the, the main factor driving the variance of your data is someone else, so uh, you, uh, conclusions about the cancer process are, uh, of course, uh, discussed. But there's a predictive level of your data. So how much you can predict actually from, uh, from, from your data, from molecular data, to predict the development of cancer, or the efficiency of the method. Everything else is just who cares. This is the only thing you want to get. At. Yeah, now th this is uh, a step, uh, um, let's say a big step, is uh, that we are able to 
discriminate between uh, different uh, risk groups in our in our patients and so is um, the, the the aim the big aim is uh, now to uh, be able to predict uh, how um, uh, how some pa uh, how some tumors will be more um, aggressive than other ones in uh, some projects uh, we are now able to at least identify clearly different groups that were not identified before. So this uh, is at least is a first step because now we are able to discriminate these uh, kind of clusters of, sam of uh, patients that were not identified before. But they're only identifiable by, 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 by molecular data, not by their clinical behavior. It was uh, a relation indeed when you look. Um, not complete because uh, uh, then when uh, you analyze some, uh, for instance, uh, you go inside some markers and now you are able to see that really these markers, this signaling is uh, indeed different between uh, the groups that were not identified before. So you are putting evidence some components of the, pro the, the process that were not identified before. Um, could you explain why you focus in expression levels, if I understood correctly, as opposed to regulations of the pathway, phosphorylations or other modifications? Right. The, the main thing is that uh, uh, the previous uh, type of data mainly was transcriptional level, but the same uh, methods are now applied to proteomics and phosphoproteomics uh, data. The fact is... That the fact is that uh, transcriptomic level was the first one where uh, we were able to uh, to measure thousands of uh, so uh, to have uh, these uh, genome-wide uh, experiments. But now, the, uh, for cancer patients, it's become reality also to have the proteomic level, and so we are uh, soon more and more applying to other level of uh, molecules. My question is, I mean, there are marginal differences on the expression levels, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you would go for regulation, you actually tested it already? Uh, which type of regulation? For instance, in phospho phosphoproteomics uh, data, what we are able to identify uh, to analyze sets of substrate for a, for a certain kinase, we are able to identify some kinases that are active or inactive in some genes, in some samples. So still was we were able to analyze these data and interpret them in terms of active or inactive kinase or phosphatase. So those are stronger predictors? Uh, in... Um, uh, again, the, the, the fact is that we, we, we are able to clearly identify different, uh, uh, um, uh, different groups that behave differently in the phosphoproteomic uh, analysis. How we are predicting is uh, uh, it's not, we are not yet, uh, we, we, we are not able now to, to say how, predict, how good is uh, in predict because uh, we know we should have a kind of a Patients were uh, uh, were, were uh, with a certain follow up, etc. It's a bit. Uh, it's not, we are not yet uh, able to do predi predictive uh, models, but we are able to at least identify groups of uh, of, pa of different patients. Yeah. 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 So Sorry. Uh, can I say something? You, you must say something. I must. <laughs> so I just want to say that to defend the uh, Roma and Lavender, these are programs that they develop, I understand, I'm not a bioinformatics person, they develop for the use of our community, they're trying to talk to us, and it will be used, always go to Roma, yes, mm -hmm. I mean, so there will be other ways that you can use Roma, that's what you're going to say, yes? Right, yeah. yeah. And I wanted to say the goal is not to understand biological processes, but to probably do some diagnostic or, or prediction. So that's why she's trying to get this atmosphere separation between the groups so that it will be predictive of metastasis or something. Okay. Okay, thank you very yeah, much thank for your you. great presentation.